What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Figured we'd have some fun today. The draft is getting closer and closer. Uh, for those who did not see my post on Twitter, I am actually going to be in Los Angeles, in Las Vegas obviously for the draft in Las Vegas. Over the course of the next week, I'll be leaving on Sunday. I'll be coming back the following Monday. So I'm going to be gone for a while. I'm going to try to cover some things while I'm there, but to be honest, I'm going there to have fun. So I'm not exactly sure how much coverage I'm going to have over the next week. Of course, I've got great guests lined up for you here on the YouTube channel. We will have you covered 365 days a year as always, both here on the YouTube channel and on the Pack-A-Day podcast audio version. Um, I know for sure, I believe I will be doing at least an episode or two here or there throughout the course of the week. So um, I'll definitely be in and out a little bit, but for the next week or so, I may be a little more MIA than usual. But again, we have great le- guests lined up for you, but I wanted to have a couple fun episodes before I head out for, you know, potentially before the draft begins. Today, I wanted to go over my 10 bold predictions for the draft. Tomorrow, I will likely do a mock draft. And then again, we have a, a great lineup for you while I will be out and about and again in Los Angeles and Las Vegas. So can't wait for a little rest and relaxation and vacation, etc. with, of course, a little Packers and draft mixed in. But let's jump right into today's topic, and that is my 10 bold predictions for the Packers in this year's draft. And number one, I've sort of discussed already, so there's a little bit of a spoiler out there, but I'm going to put it in black ink. I'm going to make it my bold prediction. The Packers will not select a wide receiver in the first round of the draft. Again, I just go back to the fact of looking at Green Bay's usual thresholds and what they like and what they want in this Matt LaFleur system. I just really struggle to see the exact perfect fit in round one. Now, I do think Drake London could be an option. I do think George Pickens could be an option. They could reach a little bit for a Christian Watson, maybe an Alec Pierce, uh, but I ultimately look at the receivers that are round one wide receivers, and it just feels to me that the, the majority of them are going to be gone by the time Green Bay selects and or they just don't exactly fit what Green Bay is looking for until you get into the heart of the second round where Christian Walk, yeah, excuse me, Christian Watson and George Pickens and Alec Pierce start making sense for Green Bay. And I think they're going to feel confident that they can get one, maybe even two of those guys in the second round of the draft. So I'm going to stick with my prediction that the Packers do not select a wide receiver in round one. Now, very clearly, it is still very much an option. Again, they could pick somebody at 22 best available. Maybe they go outside of their thresholds with a Traylon Burks. Maybe they go with a Jahan Dotson. Who knows, right? They they could always surprise, and we know that it's a position of need. Just based on Green Bay's history, really valuing those premium positions that we've talked about in the past, youth, athleticism, and then um, you know the ability to play within this Matt LaFleur offense and the blocking ability on the outside. It's just really hard to look at the first round and say, like, that's the one. That's a perfect fit. So again, number one on my bold predictions, Green Bay does not select a wide receiver in round one. Number two is that Green Bay will not make two selections on the first day of the draft. Now, I'm going to hedge my bets here a little bit and say that Green Bay does not make two picks, meaning they could make one, they could make none, or they could make three. And I think there's a couple different ways that they could have it. I don't think there's going to be any way where they don't make any, but I do think there's a real legit possibility. and, And if I had to guess which direction this would go, that Green Bay trades out of that second round pick or the second first round pick into the second round of the draft, moving back a handful of spots and maybe picking up a little more draft capital. Now, I have been on the record of saying, and I will say again, I don't think Green Bay needs more draft capital in this draft. They have plenty of draft picks. But my guess is that Brian Gutekunst is is going to want the flexibility to move up and down the draft boards. And just because he moves down with that second round pick and picks up capital, maybe later he moves his third round pick earlier to the top of the third to pick up, you know, another, maybe one of his top 75 players or something like that. So wouldn't surprise me if we see Brian Gutekunst make multiple trades to maneuver himself both up and down the draft board. But I think if, if you look at this Packers team, you could look at the fact that they have they may have more value on the guys in the second round. And they also may 
simply want to pay players a little bit less and going into the second round gets you a little bit less of a cap hit than that first round pick does. So I think there's the potential that Green Bay probably keeps their pick at 22, but then moves out of 28 into the second round. There's also a, a longer shot, but they could package both of their second round picks and try to get back in the first round and maybe say, hey, you know what? Again, we don't need a ton of guys in this draft. We just need really good players. And we feel like we, if we can get three first round picks, maybe that's the best way to go and, and really getting maybe, I don't know, an offensive lineman an edge rusher and a wide receiver and say, hey, you know, if we can get, you know, we don't need two guys in the second round. We want three really good players at the positions that we need the most. We're going to get three first round picks and go that way. So again, I think it's more likely that they move down with pick 28 into the second round instead of the other way around. But I will hedge my bets a little bit and say Green Bay does not make two selections on the first day of the draft. Number three is I don't think Green Bay will move into the top 15 of the draft. I was very tempted to say that Green Bay does not move up uh, past pick 22, but I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that if there's a guy there at like 19 or 20, that Gutekunst could move up a spot or two. But I don't expect any like super aggressive move up into the top 15. The biggest reason I say that is this just doesn't feel like the draft to move into the top 15. The heart of this draft feels like where Green Bay has their top four picks from about pick 20 till about what, pick 75, where there's a lot of really good depth and talented players um, where, you know, it's going to be more of like your flavor of the week or what your preference is as a team. And you can get your guys in that range. It doesn't seem like a really great top of the draft sort of draft. So for that reason, I wouldn't use a lot of those picks to move up and get to the top of the draft. I just don't think it makes sense. I think Green Bay is going to want to keep those four picks as best as they can. And again, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that they maybe they could move a couple later picks up to you know to move up two or three spots to get a guy that they want if somebody fell. But I don't expect any aggressive move into the top fifteen. All right, number four on my list. Last year, I hit on my bold prediction. Make of it what you will now. But my bold prediction at around this time last year was that the Packers would select Amari Rodgers in the draft. They did that. I got a bunch of other bold predictions wrong in that segment, but I did get that one right. So of course, I'm going to brag about that. Uh, but I'm going to say, again, a wide receiver, I'm going to say that Green Bay does select Alec Pierce in this draft. I think second round is key. It wouldn't surprise me. I know a lot of people think he's maybe late second, early third. It wouldn't surprise me if Green Bay took him with their first second round pick, maybe a little bit aggressive. Wouldn't even surprise me if they moved up in the second round, or if they did in fact move down from pick 28 to the beginning of the second round, if they were even a little bit more aggressive and selected Alec Pierce towards the beginning of the second round. He just seems to fit everything that they like. I think he's going to be a very good player. I think he'd fit well within Matt LaFleur's offense. He just seems and feels and everything like he's a Green Bay Packer. He grew up a Green Bay Packer fan. So I'm putting it on the page as well. The Packers will select Alec Pierce at some point in the draft. Number five on my list, the Packers will select four offensive linemen. If you didn't listen to yesterday's episode, go back and listen. And I detailed why Green Bay needs a lot more depth. And I think they could take a ton of swings, especially if they do end up with the draft capital that they have already, or even if they end up with a couple more picks. Like if they end up with 12 or 13 picks in this draft, it's of course going to give them more flexibility to maybe get, a, you know, even you know, more or take more swings at specific positions. I think that position that they take a lot of swings at is offensive line. They need talent. They need depth. They need players they can develop. They're going to add a lot of offensive linemen, whether it's via the draft or especially after an undrafted free agency. But I'm going to say they add four offensive linemen via the draft in this draft. Number six, Green Bay doesn't leave the first two rounds without both an edge rusher and an offensive lineman. So if they keep their four picks, I'm going to Right now, say two of those four picks, one of them is an edge rusher, one is an offensive lineman. Maybe the other two are wide receiver. Maybe it's wide receiver and safety. Maybe it's wide receiver and another offensive lineman or defensive line. Who knows? But I'm going to say they do not leave the first two rounds of the draft without at least one offensive lineman and without at least one edge rusher. So another bold prediction there. Number seven, Green Bay will break one of their tendencies with one of their first two picks. So maybe those are two picks in the first round. Maybe it's a first and an early second if they do trade back. But I'm going to say that Green Bay breaks one of their tendencies with their first two picks. Now, what are those tendencies? Premium position players, meaning offensive tackle, quarterback, edge rusher, defensive lineman, or corner. 
All right, I'm going to say that one of their two picks may not be one of those things, or they go outside of their usual extremely high athletic scores at a position, or they draft a player that's 23 or 24 years old, something out of the realm of normal for them. Either, again, non-premium position, non-age-friendly, you know, age friendly, meaning they're 23 or 24, non-super athletic. I'm going to say in their first two picks, they do a major tendency breaker on one of the two picks. What tendency that is, we shall see, but I'm going to say they go outside of their normal tendencies with one of their first two picks. Number eight, Green Bay will draft at least one specialist in this draft. Maybe it's a punter, maybe it's a kicker, maybe it's another long snapper. I'm not sure which, but I'm going to say Green Bay drafts at least one specialist before the end of the day. It might even be a player who is a linebacker or fullback or tight end or wide receiver or corner, but really truly is just a either like a either a return specialist or a gunner or just a pure special teams player, but they are going to leave this draft with at least one special team specialist. Number nine, Green Bay does not make any trades for any veteran players. No Debo Samuel, no Terry McLaurin, no DK Metcalf, no anyone else. They do not trade for any veterans on draft day or the day before the draft or whatever. No no draft pick trades for veterans. I just think that they are going to very much value their five top 100 picks, their two firsts, their two seconds, and a third. And I don't think they're going to give those premium picks up for a veteran player that they then have to give a huge contract to. I just don't see it. It would be really fun if I'm wrong, because I would love McLaurin or Metcalf or Samuel or AJ Brown or any one of those really fun players on the team. I just don't see it happening. And I'm going to say Green Bay does not make any trades for any veteran players. And then last but not least, number 10, the Packers complete a draft day trade with the Seattle Seahawks. Not for Metcalf, not for you know Tyler Lockett, not for any veteran player, but in some sort of swap, whether they move up in the draft, whether they move down in the draft, the Packers and the Seahawks tend to be good friends when it comes to draft day trades. Brian Gutekunst likes being aggressive with draft day trades. John Schneider loves moving down in the draft. There's a lot of picks that Seattle and Green Bay have that are relatively close to one another. I just think at some point, Green Bay gets a trade done with Seattle to move up, down, whatever it may be. Maybe they exchange a variety of picks. I'm just going to say by the end of the draft, the Packers, Brian Gutekunst and John Schneider will have made some sort of draft day trade involving draft picks. Maybe it's even next year's draft picks. Who knows? But I just see that happening in some capacity. So quick recap, Packers do not select a wide receiver in round one. Packers do not make two selections on the first day of the draft. The Packers do not move into the top 15 of the draft. The Packers will select Alec Pierce. The Packers select four offensive linemen. Green Bay does not leave the first two rounds without both an edge rusher and an offensive lineman. Green Bay will break one of their tendencies within their first two picks. Green Bay will draft at least one specialist. The Packers don't make any trades for any veteran players. And the Packers complete a draft day trade with the Seattle Seahawks. Appreciate you joining me. I'll be right back here tomorrow with a mock draft episode, so make sure not to miss that. Cannot wait for the NFL draft. As I mentioned, I will be taking some time off, but make sure to subscribe. We've got some great guests lined up, so you're not going to want to miss it. Again, I'll be right back here tomorrow, but until next time, and as always, Go Pack Go!